over there out in the front. my phone is like two seconds away. Hey, shalom Israel, most high in Christ, bliss. This is IUIC three, 365 scripts, four chapters a day. Uh, you were supposed to have Captain Zakar today. He fell ill, so I'm filling in as Officer Emanuel with IUIC Arkansas. Unfortunately, we were supposed to have been started, but we had some technical difficulties. For you brothers that's on IT in y'all school, make sure y'all keep y'all phones off silent. Be ready. Be always prepared, all right? But without further ado, we're going to start with Genesis chapter 21. I ain't got much time, so it ain't going to be much precepts or whatever, but we're going to get through it, Lord's willing. All right, Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken unto him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old. As God had commanded him, and Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God had made me to laugh, so that so all that hear will laugh with me. And that's where Isaac names me. He will laugh because it's a funny story, you know. A hundred years old, ninety years old, finally having a baby after all of them years. It's funny how he came about. All right, verse seven, and she said. Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. So I know it may be some false doctrines out there concerning this being a scripture that permits us to celebrate birthdays or whatever. This is not the case. If you know what the word weaned means... The word wean means when you're done uh, getting breastfed. So this wasn't a birthday. This wasn't that type of party. All right? He was celebrating him being weaned from his mother's breast. All right? Real quick, let me get a precept in 2 Maccabees chapter 7. Just to show how, uh, how long uh, children typically were on the breast before they were weaned. This was not his first birthday. Second birthday, it was not a birthday celebration. Second Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 27. But she bowing herself towards him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn, spake in her country language on this manner. O oh my son, have pity upon me that bear thee nine months in my womb, and gave thee suck three years, and nourished thee, and brought thee up unto this age, and endured the troubles of education. So there's uh, Israelite foremother uh, telling her son how she uh, breastfed him for three years. So he was weaned at the age of three years. So this wasn't a birthday party. They were just celebrating around this time, Isaac, two to three years old. All right, he finally off his mother's breast. So Abraham had a feast. All right, back to Genesis chapter 21 and verse 9. And Sarah saw the, saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore, she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. So Sarah saw Ishmael mocking, making fun of her because, you know, she old or whatever, an old mother. And, you know what I'm saying, in response to that, Sarah said, 
get 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 her, get Hagar and her son the hell up out of here. So of course, Abraham, you know this is this is first firstborn son. He had love for Ishmael, so he didn't respond quite, you know, uh, kindly to that per se. All right, verse eleven. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. So Abraham didn't like that. He didn't like the fact that Sarah said, cast out the bond woman and her son because he had love for Ishmael. But watch this, verse 12. And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bond woman. And all that Sarah have said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So God said, hey, Abraham, don't get mad. Don't get upset at what she said. You know what I'm saying? Listen to her, because she right. She on point. Isaac is the child of the promise. That's the one that I promise you to have for your seed to be the, as the stars and the multitude of the heaven, period. So don't don't be, you know, grieved by the fact that she said, to hell with Hagar and Ishmael. All right, verse 13. And also, of the son of the bond woman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. Because you know you did birth them or whatever. Verse 14. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder. And the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle. And she cast the child under one of the shrubs. So she ran out of water and she felt as if... They was going to start die of thirst. So she thought a child was going to die because they ran out of water. So she hid the child, Ishmael, under the shrubs. All right? And she went and set, set her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shoot. For she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called unto Hagar out of heaven. Said unto her, and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. So God said, Nah, Hagar, I ain't going to kill the lad. You know what I'm saying? So when she opened her eyes, she saw a well of water. So they wasn't going to die of thirst. So remember, in chapter 16, he let her know, you know, what the child was going to be, future prophecy, his hand going to be against all nations, all of that. So the child got to live to regenerate, produce seeds. So uh, the child wasn't going to die of thirst. That's what she was thinking when she ran out of water. All right, verse 20. And God was with the lad, and he grew, and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. So let me backtrack a little bit in chapter 16 when God said uh, what the nature of Ishmael would be. Because it said he dwelt in the wilderness and was an archer. So that means he learned skills of warfare, of combat. All right, Genesis chapter 16 and verse 11. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, which means God shall hear. God heard the affliction. Because the Lord have heard thy affliction, and he will be a wild man. This is talking about his seed line, his lineage, his nation after him. They will be known as wild people. Like you know with Al-Qaeda and ISIS and all of that, how they strap C4 to their chest and blow up a whole town, a community without any remorse. For Allah Akbar, there's prophecy way in Genesis. Before he even came alive, all right? It said, verse 12, and he will be a wild man, and his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren in the Middle East. So God had future prophecy concerning the, uh, the what's the word, the posterity of Ishmael, all right? So they was, they was not going to die of thirst like she was thinking. Uh, when they ran out of water. All right, back to Genesis chapter 21 and verse 21. So we just read he dwelt in the wilderness, was an archer, going into his nature. He would be a wild man. He would learn and indulge in war, all right? 
verse, Genesis chapter 21, verse 21. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran. And his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech and Pico, the chief captain of his host, spake unto Abraham, saying, God is with thee in all that thou doest. Now therefore swear unto me here by God that thou wilt not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son. But according to the kindness that I have done unto thee, thou shalt do unto me, and to the land wherein thou hast sojourned. And Abraham said, I will swear. And Abraham reproved Abimelech because of a well of water, which Abimelech's servant had violently taken away. And Abimelech said, I will not who have done this thing. Neither didst thou tell me, neither yet had I heard of it but today. And Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them unto Abimelech. And both of them made a covenant. And Abraham said, set seven ewe lambs of flock by themselves. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What mean these seven ewe lambs which thou hast set by themselves? And he said, For these seven ewe lambs shalt thou take of my hand, that they may be a witness unto me that I have digged this well. Wherefore he called that place Beersheba, because there they swear both of them. Beersheba means the well of the oath. So that's the meaning behind the name. All right, verse 32. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. Then Abimelech rose up and pickled the chief captain of his host, and they returned into the land of the Philistines. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned in the Philistines' land many days. All right, chapter 22 and verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac. Now, remember, we just read he acknowledged Ishmael, he said, yeah, he your seed or whatever. Ishmael going to live, so on and so forth. But like we covered previously in chapter 17 through 20, Ishmael does not really count. Why? Because he was a child of the flesh. That was something that Sarah and Sarai at the time and Abraham came up with because she was losing faith and basically wanted a surrogate. She wanted a bun made to have a child for her because she was becoming weak in faith. She didn't think she could have children. God had nothing to do with that idea, like, like we said beforehand. When you read Genesis 16, 1 through 3, you would not see, and the Lord said unto Sarai, and the Lord said unto Abraham, no, that was something that, that was their idea. So God only acknowledged spiritually Isaac to be Abraham's son. That's why he's say, saying here, with Ishmael still alive, take thy only son Isaac. Isaac is the child of the promise. He's the only one that count, and that's where we come from, all right? We descend from Isaac, all right? So verse 2, and he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for a burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. So God just told this man, hey, go offer up your own. The same one that I promised is going, I'm going to give your covenant through him. Your seed going to pass down through him. You gonna, the, uh, your, your seed going to be as the stars of heaven, sand of the sea through him. Go and kill him. That's, that's what God told Abraham. But as you can see in verse 3, Abraham didn't even hesitate. He went like, oh, but God, wait a minute. God, you said he didn't do none of that. He rose up and went on about what the Lord commanded him to do. And we're going to get a precept to show what was in his mind, the faith that he had that fueled him to do that without any hesitation. All right. So where we at? Verse 4. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place of far off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide you here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. 
And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? So Isaac getting a little worried, like, Hey, daddy. I see you got the fire, you know what I'm saying? You got the knife. I, you know, we got everything for a sacrifice except the sacrifice. What's going on, Pop? With a lamb in. All right, verse 8. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. So Abraham said, look, don't worry about that. God got that. All right, verse 9. And they came to the place which God had told them of. And Abraham built an altar there. And laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. So Abraham got the knife like this, finna come down on his son to fulfill the commandment that God gave him. The angel had to call him in the midst of that, like, hold on, hold on now. All right, hold on, Abraham, wait a minute. Verse 12, and he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. So that was a test to prove Abraham's fear for the Most High. God told him to do something. He didn't hesitate. He went through with it. That shows you what the fear of God means. Sirach 2 and 15 said, if you fear God, you will not disobey his word. The word came out. Abraham was finna go through with what he had to do. And in the midst of that, the angel said, uh, hold on. You good. You good. You passed the test. Now I know that you fear God. So let's get that precept to show y'all why Abraham had that faith knowing that Isaac, was the one that God said would be the child of the promise and continue his seed in his covenant Why he was finna go through with killing him. This is the faith that Abraham had. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 17. I wish we had more time. We could go real in depth to this thing because it's real, real heavy, but we don't got time. All right. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Verse 18, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So did Abraham knows, hey, this is the child of the promise. In Isaac shall your seed be called. Isaac is not old enough to have children get married. He has done none of that. He has done no reproduction yet. And Abraham is finna kill him. Let's see why. Let's see what Abraham's inner faith was. Verse 19. Abraham. Verse 19. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. So that that was what that was what that was what Abraham had in his mind to be able to go through with it. He said look if, if this is the child of the promise and God commanded me to kill him when I kill him, God going to resurrect him up from the dead. That's faithful. That's, a, that's heavy right there. I wish we could go deep into that, though, but I'll pray to the most high. But that's why faith without works is dead. You see, when we read in Genesis, it's just strictly obedience, fear. He's doing what the most high told him. But you ain't going to be able to really keep God's commandments and follow through with obedience if you don't got that faith. Abraham had that inner faith that fueled him to keep the commandment of God. All right, that's why you can't have one without the other. The patience of the saints, all right, is keeping the commandments in faith of Christ. You can't have one without the other. All right, let's go back to Genesis 22. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, and the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. I'm sorry, I skipped the verse. Verse 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. So just like he told his son, 
God gonna provide us a lamb. God gonna provide us a sacrifice. That's exactly what happened once his obedience was fulfilled and he passed that test of faith. All right, God did provide a sacrifice for them. All right, and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Verse 14, and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, and the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, by myself have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and has not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. That's heavy right there. That's a part of the covenant of Abraham. That show you all nations cannot be in that covenant because the seed of Abraham going to have slaves in the kingdom of heaven. Once they get the land that he promised Abraham, they're going to possess their enemies as slaves. Let's get there. Let's get more particular with that. Let's go to Amos chapter 9 and verse 11. Who going to be the enemies that Abraham's seed possess? Amos chapter 9, verse 11. All right, it says, In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old, verse 12, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name said the Lord that doth this. So the seed of Jacob, which is the seed of Abraham, is going to possess the remnant of Edom and all the other nations. That's the enemies. That's a part of Abraham's covenant. Let's get one more precept. Numbers chapter 24, verse 17. Hey, it's a lot more precepts. Like I said, if we had more time, we would have really dug into it a little bit. But this is just stuff I just don't want to skip past for y'all. Numbers chapter 24 and verse 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, talking about Christ, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheph, and Edom shall be a possession. Sarah also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. So the main enemy that God is letting you know going to be our slaves is the so-called white man. So they cannot be a part of the covenant of Abraham. They, the enemies that's a part of the covenant that Abraham see must possess to fulfill the covenant that God gave unto him. That's a, that's a heavy verse right there. All right, back to Genesis 22 and verse 18. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because thou hast obeyed my voice, talking about the nations of Israel, the 12 tribes. All right, we went through that previously. Go watch chapter 17 through 20. It was broken down beautifully, all right? The nation of Israel is the nations that will be blessed, all right, in Abraham's covenant. Verse 19. So Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah, she hath also borne children unto thy brother Nahor. Hers is firstborn, and Buzz his brother, and Kimuel the father of Aram, and Kased, and Hazo, and Pildash, and Jitlaf, and Bethuel. And Bethuel begat Rebekah. These eight Milcah did bear to Nahor, Abraham's brother. And his concubine, whose name was Rumah, she also bear Tabah, and Gaham, and Thahash, and Makkah. Chapter 23 and verse 1. And Sarah was 107 and 20 years old, so she was 127. These were the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died in Kiriath Arba, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. So Sarah died at the age of 127. All right, verse 3. And Abraham stood up from before his dead and spake unto the sons of Heb, saying, I am a stranger and a sojourner with you. 
Give me a possession of a burying place with you, that I might bury my dead out of my sight. And the children that helped answer Abraham, saying unto him, Hear us, my Lord, thou art a mighty prince amongst us, and the choice of our sepulchres bury thy dead. None of us shall withhold from thee this sepulchre, but that thou mayest bury thy dead. And Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, even to the children of health. And he communed with them, saying, If it be your mind that I shall bury my dead out of my sight, hear me, and entreat for me to Ephron, the son of Zohar, that he might give me the cave of Machpelah, which he hath, which is in the end of his field. For as much money as it is worth, he shall give it me for a possession of a burying place amongst you. And Ephron dwelt amongst the children of health. And Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the audience of the children of health, even of all that went in at the gates of his city, saying, Nay, my lord, hear me. The field give I thee, and the cave that is therein I give it thee. In the presence of the sons of my people give I it thee. Bury thy dead. And Abraham bowed down himself before the people of the land. And he spake unto Ephron in the audience of the people of the land, saying, but if thou wilt give it, I pray thee, hear me. I will give thee money for the field. Take it of me, and I will bury my dead there. And Ephron, said, e Ephron answered Abraham, saying unto him, My lord, hearken unto thee, the land is worth four hundred shekels of silver. What is that betwixt me and thee? Bury therefore thy dead. And Abraham hearkened unto Ephron, and Abraham weighed to Ephron the silver which he had named. And the audience of the sons of help, four hundred shekels of silver, current money with the merchant. And the field of Ephron was in Machpelah, which was before Memra, the field and the cave which was therein, and all the trees that were in the field, that were in the borders round about were made sure. And Abraham for a possession in the presence of the children of Heph, before all that went in at the gates of his city. And after this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Machpelah, before Memra. And the same is Hebron in the land of Canaan. And the field and the cave that is therein were made sure unto Abraham for a possession of a burying place by the sons of Heth. Chapter 24 and verse 1. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites amongst whom I dwell. Showing you what? God never condoned. For I would see there was never any interracial marriage. Let's get there real quick in Toby chapter 4 verse 12. Way before Moses' law, Deuteronomy 73, we carried that custom amongst our forefathers. He said, don't you ever. He told his servant, do not let Isaac take a wife of the land of Canaan. We don't do that. All right. Tobit chapter 4 and verse 12. All right. It says, Beware of our whore my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers, and take not a strange woman to wife, which is not thy father's tribe. For we are the children of the prophets, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember, my son that our fathers from the beginning since Genesis, even that they all marry wives of their own kindred and were blessed in their children, and their seed shall inherit the land. So you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Genesis married wives of their own kindred. They could not deal with the daughters of Canaan. All right, let's go back to Genesis 24 and verse 4. But thou shalt go into my country, into my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure for the woman will not be willing to follow me into this land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. Verse 7, The Lord God of heaven which took me from my father's house and from the land of my country, and which spake unto me and that swore unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send this angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. So Abraham let him know, look, an angel going to be with you. It's going to happen. You're going to get a wife for my son of my kindred. I right, trust it. Verse 9. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master, and swear to him concerning that matter. Verse 10. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed. 
for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia and to the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that, that I might drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. And it came to pass before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born unto Bethuel, the son of Michal, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with a pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled a pitcher and came up. So Rebekah was undefiled and she was beautiful. That's the, hey, that's the wives our forefathers had since the beginning. Verse 17. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they had done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again into the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And the man wandering at her held his peace to whip, whether the Lord made his journey prosperous or not. And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel of weight and two bracelets for her hands and ten shekels weight of gold and said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, who she, which she bare unto Nahor. And she said moreover unto him, We have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord, because he knew the signs he asked for just came to pass. Verse 27, And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who have not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. And the damsel ran and told them of his mother's house these things. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man and unto the well. And it came to pass when he saw the earring and bracelets upon his sister's hands, when he heard the words of Rebekah his sister, saying, Thus spake the man unto me that he that came unto the man, that he came unto the man. And behold, he stood by the camels at the well, and he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord, wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house and room for the camels. And the man came into the house, and he ungirded his camels, and gave straw and provender for the camels, and water to wash his feet, and the man's feet that were with him. And there was set meat before him to eat. And he said, I will not eat until I have told mine errand. And he said, Speak on. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. And the Lord hath blessed my master greatly, and he has become great. And he hath given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men's servants and maid servants and camels and asses. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old. And unto him he hath given all that she hath. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I dwell. But thou shalt go into my father's house and to my country and take a wife unto my son. And I said unto my master, Peradventure the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, The Lord before whom I walk will send this angel with thee and prosper thy way. And thou shalt take a wife for my son of my kindred of my father's house. Then shalt thou be clear this from my oath. Then shall thou be clear from this my oath, when thou comest to my country, and if thou give thee, and if they give not thee one, thou shalt be clear from my oath. And I came this day unto the well, and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if now if now thou do prosper my way which I go, behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin cometh forth to draw water. And I say unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to, of thy pitcher to drink. And she say unto me, Both drink thou, and I will also drive for thy camels. Let the same be the woman who the Lord hath appointed out for my master's son. 
And before I had done speaking in my heart, behold, Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on the shoulder. And she went down unto the well and drew water. And I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will give my camel's drink. I will give thy camel's drink also. So I drank, and she made the camel's drink also. And I asked her and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel Nahor's son, unto whom Malchah bare unto him. And I put the earring upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. And I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord, and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. So the servant just gave a whole backtrack, a whole reporter, basically, what already came to pass. That's why it sounded like I was reading the same stuff twice. He was just giving an account to them, letting them know, like, I, t- I was thinking this, and I was saying this, and praying this in my head. And before I got done, Rebecca showed up, and everything was fulfilled. All right? Verse 48. And I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. And now, if you would deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me, that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceeded from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord has spoken. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. And his servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, and gave them to Rebekah. And he gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. And they did eat and drink. And the men that were with him and tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning and he said, send me away unto my master. And, the, and her brother and her mother said, let the damsel abide with us a few days. At the least ten. After that, she shall go. So the, they were like, we love our daughter. We can't just let her go immediately. Give us like ten days. Then y'all can go on. All right. Verse uh, 56. And he said unto them, hinder me not, seeing the Lord that prosper my way. Send me away that I may go to my master. So the servant like, nah, send me away. I got to go. I got to handle my business. I got to fulfill my oath. Verse 57. And they said, we will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebekah and said unto her, will thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. And they sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, thou art our sister. Be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them, narrowing it down even more. The seed of Abraham, the covenant that pertains to Abraham, is only dealing with the children that Rebekah had, which narrows down to Jacob and Esau, and we know what Esau did, sold out for raw meat. Jacob is who the covenant pertains to. That's why Isaiah 14, Revelation 13, Jeremiah 30, the list, the list goes on. We going to possess our enemies. There's covenants in Genesis. They cannot be broken. All right? We the ones that's going to possess our enemies. We are the seed of Abraham. All right? Verse 61. And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they read up on the camels and followed the man. And the servant took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well of Haroi, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. So you see our forefathers back then, way in Genesis, they, that was a custom of theirs. They would go out and meditate, showing you that the Lord was always dealing with us before the law of Moses, before the stones with the commandments on them. The Lord was dealing with us. Isaac, as a daily custom, went out to meditate, all right? And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel, meaning she got down, she bowed. She knew instantly, like, that's my Lord, that's my Lord, that's the one right there. She got off instantly and bowed. Verse 65, for she said unto the servant, what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. She took a veil and covered herself. So 
All that confusion in 1 Corinthians 11 dealing with the hair being a hair covering for the sisters? No. Right here you see it was a custom of our foremothers. They took veils, actual pieces of material fabric, to cover their heads. That was always a sign of submission. That's what 1 Corinthians 11 is talking about and going into. That's showing you right there, all right? Verse 66. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah. And she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Because remember, Sarah passed when she was 127. So Isaac, you know what I'm saying, he got a wife like unto his mother, a righteous sister, a beautiful sister. Therefore, he was comforted when he married this sister, Rebecca. All right, so I know we zoomed through that. Couldn't go precept upon precept. Couldn't go deep into the detail I wanted to get into. But I'll oh, praise to the Most High. Uh, like Captain Zakar said, you got any questions, send them through the messenger. All right. Uh, hey, that's all I got. I didn't win six minutes past times. It's, it's Camp 101. I got to run the camp. It's 31 days of camp, all right, in Arkansas. So, hey, Shalom, Most High, Christ bless.